Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the two newest additions to the Viseart palette line. We have the Midsummer palette and the Solstice palette. I have a tutorial using both of these palettes today. I'm doing some swatch comparisons with other palettes in the Viseart line. And then of course, giving you my overall thoughts on these. So if you would like to see that, then just keep watching. <laughs> So these aren't super new, so I was very, very close to not reviewing these, but as you guys know, I have a very large Vizzy Art collection, and I know a lot of you look to me to do Vizzy Art reviews, so I'm sorry it's a little bit late, but it is finally here. Just so you know, Vizzy Art did send these to me. They did come in a little bit later, which is why this video is a little bit later. Fun fact, Vizzy Art was actually, I think, one of the very first brands that was like really big in my eyes, one of my favorite brands to send me products. So I am eternally grateful to Vizzy Art for seeing my worth at such a small channel. Yeah, so it's always so exciting to receive a PR package from them. Anyways, let's talk about the individual palettes themselves. So like I said, these are available. You can get them on the Vizzy Art site, though it looks like they are sold out last I checked. Beautylish as well, and then I always suggest Muse Beauty Pro, especially right now. So after you watch this review, if you decide you want these, Muse Beauty Pro right now, they're having their buy this, get that sale, which I believe ends on the 21st. So I would get these now if you want. <laughs> but the deal is if you buy any two of the Petite Pro palettes, you get an Esum G29 free, but the catch is you get that free brush and any two petite pros that you want for $48 now they do have a bunch of different colors in these little petite pro palettes but particularly if you want these two this is the best deal you can get $48 for both of these and a high quality brush I'm putting some urgency on it because this is one of the best deals that you can get on Vizzy Art individually these are gonna run you at $30 a piece so if you get both at 60 normally but then with this deal you get it for 48 and a really high quality brush I do have an affiliated link down below if if you want to shop the Muse Beauty Pro sale, always suggest getting Busy Art during that sale. Anyways, those are just the places you can get it, $30 each. So let's just get straight into it. If you don't know what the Petite Pros are or how the packaging works, basically it's a typical Busy Art fashion. It's kind of like a little mini easel is how they do it so you can fold it any which way that you want. And they're so tiny, about the size of a credit card. They're perfect for travel. I love the Petite Pros for that reason. These are the palettes I bring with me if I just want to throw some something in my purse or if I'm going away for the weekend and I'm really trying to minimize the amount of space that I'm packing. These are some of the best because inside they do pack eight shadows and palettes I feel like are always really well thought out and they have everything you need. I do do swatch comparisons later on in this video and a lot of the reasons why sometimes the shades are very similar to other shades in a palette is because these palettes always contain the shades you need to create a full look which is a light cream shade, a deepening shade, normally chocolate is what they do. It's not in this palette, but they'll normally have a defining shade, a light shimmery kind of champagne peachy shade. So that is why you will find a lot of dupes within these little edit palettes. But the beauty of them are the fact that they are so tiny and they have every kind of shade that you need. And then also the last thing about the palette that is great besides the mirror that you get is each of these shades are interchangeable. So you can just easily pull them out. They are magnetic. You can mix and match with the other petite pros and they have the edit, which is I believe 12 shades around there that are also the same size so these palettes can be very customizable so let's take a deeper look into each of the palettes we'll start off with the solstice palette it has a very nice peach cover here and then when you open it up you have the eight shades you are going to get four mattes in here and then four shimmer shades one of the shimmer shades is a duochrome the second shade right here has almost more of a celestial finish there's no glitter in it but it is noticeably more glittery and has a multi-dimensional finish on the eye which you will learn about about in the tutorial and the other two are your traditional shimmer shades just reading the nice little card that they sent me here this has a selection of all new earthbound tones it's a bliss of rich sun drenched colors and I think this palette is just beautiful now initially looking at it especially online I was pretty underwhelmed by it but now that I have it in my hands it actually it's not as warm as I thought it was going to be especially when comparing it to the other palettes that I have those are really warm this has almost a more cooler tone peachy undertone to them which makes this palette more unique it's the same thing with both of these palettes they look underwhelming but their undertones are so different from what they already have in their existing line and it's really special on the eyes with this palette in particular I think it's very special on the eyes because it's very 
very muted. You do have this really cool duochrome shade right here. Um, this one is like a violet to light blue. There also is a duochrome shade in the Midsummer. I do want to compare them for you so that you can see. They're very, very similar. So this is the Midsummer one. This one is a Solstice. Thin is one thing. If you get both, the duochromes that they have are very similar. You get a beautiful array of different finishes here. I really liked this one a lot more than I thought I would, and I was underwhelmed by it at first, but on the eyes, it is gorgeous. Taking a quick look into the Midsummer palette, just so you know, the inspiration behind it is Enchanting Midsummer Evenings. It's supposed to be very ethereal and fairy-like. This one has a bit more mattes. You have six mattes. One of them is one of those mattes shades where they have very subtle glitter particles in there, but those kind of rub away. And then you have two shimmers, and one of the shimmers is a duochrome. So this one is more matte. This one, obviously, is the more cool-toned mauve one. This is normally my typical kind of color story that I absolutely love. I thought that this is one that I would love more. When I show you the tutorials, you'll see a deeper look into each of the palettes, but I do think I prefer the Solstice palette. But this one is still gorgeous. I do think kind of the fault in this palette could be that I, there's just too many mid-tone transition shades. There's not a lot of depth in this particular palette. These kind of run very similar on the eyelid. I do love the pops in here. I think these pops make all of the difference. I mostly use the pop shades for this look and I absolutely love it. The shimmer shade's gorgeous and the quality in here is fantastic. I just am missing some depth in here. You have this one which is the deepest shade and I have it basically everywhere and you can see it's just not that deep. So I do think if you have a medium to deeper complexion this can be a little bit harder to work with especially these shades right here are going to look very similar on the eye but I do think the Midsummer palette has a lot more depth and I do think the shades in here each have more of a purpose in the palette whereas here they're kind of very close to each other. So I'm going to show you the look first that I did with the Solstice palette. What I want you to pay attention to is how different each of these shades look on the eye and I just love the look. So <laughs> let's get into that. So this look is going to be with the Solstice palette. I'm going to start off with this creamy peach shade right here. This is going to be applied right underneath the brow bone. Love how usually they'll incorporate a simple cream shade like this. I like to lay it down right there. We're going to work our way down this way to build the gradient. So we're starting off with this light peach shade. If you have a skin tone deeper than mine, this might struggle to show up on your eyelid. For me and those who are more fair than me, as you can see, it does add a light warmth to the eye. Next, we're going in with this warm, almost mauve orange. It's a very unique shade. This is when the color and depth really begins to be brought into my eye. So I'm starting it off really in the outer corner and then whatever is left over, I'm bringing it into the crease and then also gonna run that just along the lower lash line. With an even smaller brush, we're going into the chocolate shade. Dark browns for me are an essential color, and I love that Vizier almost always has a dark brown shade in all of their palettes. It's annoying when I do swatch comparisons though, because I'm like, well, yeah, this is a dupe, but for me, it's just a color that I reach for in every single look almost. So I'm applying this mostly on the outer corner of the eye, blending it into my lash line to have a little bit of depth there, and we're gonna slowly work this out. It's working out very well for me. This is a nice quality deep brown without being too deep. It's buildable. With my finger, we're going into this bronzy shade. This is going to keep the depth in the outer part of the lid and the shift on it is more orangey bronze, which really pulls nice warmth into this look. Next, we're going into this shade. Now, this isn't as pigmented as it may seem. It more so, I would say, has a pretty sheer base to it and this is kind of one of those shades where it's more so about the dimension that it brings to the eye almost like a celestial shade. It's really stunning. So I'm focusing the product on the inner half and then I'm taking whatever's left over and bringing it over because it does have such a gorgeous shine. Lastly, I'm going in with this peachy champagne color. This is really stunning and very flattering on the eye. I'm just brightening up and lifting the eye. So this is just the shadow. I'm gonna do liner and lashes so you can really see the final look. And with lashes and everything, here is what the Solstice palette looks like. Very soft, very pretty, just hints of warmth. I think it's so stunning. I ended up really liking this palette more than I thought I would. Like I said, I think what's really special about these is how they look on the eye because the undertones are more unique compared to when you just look at it and it is underwhelming. So the next tutorial we are going to go into is the Midsummer palette. I really like this palette because I love the tones 
in here. These are my absolute favorite tones. I wish we could have replaced one or two of the transition shades for maybe some more shimmer or something a little bit more fun, but it is a really soft romantic palette and I really do love the look that I got. So let's get into it. We're gonna jump into the Midsummer palette. I'm going to start off with my cream shade. This one has more of a pinky base compared to the Solstice palette. Next I'm gonna go into this shade right here. This is going to be the transition color. We're gonna take the pink shade right here. I really wanted the pink to show through and kind of just bring some vibrancy to this look because this palette can be very toned down but if you incorporate some pink that's what's going to help make this palette stand out more and I want to focus that color on the lower lash line. Next we're going to take this shade right here. This has the most depth in the palette but I do find that it doesn't add a lot of depth so I don't think this palette in particular is going to be very deep skin tone friendly. There are little glitters running throughout it. If you apply it like I do and kind of blend it out you will find that the shimmers fly away. Make sure you blend everything out good. I had to play with at least one of the duochromes so we're going to use the one in this one. In this one one has a fun blue twist to it. Now it's not a really strong duochrome. You'll see that this is more of a sheer application of color but it is more so about the finish and the gleam when the light hits which there's something to be said about these formulas as well which are very nice and just soft which is a general theme of these palettes. You see how pretty that is when the light hits? Finally we're taking the lightest shade and you know the drill with this but this would be really pretty all over the eye if you just play with the crease colors as well. It'd be a really nice soft brightening look. All right, so I'm gonna finish liner lashes and I'll show you the final look. And here is the final look for the Midsummer palette. My blush doesn't match because I'm still wearing it from the first look, but I did change the lip. And I really love this look. You guys know I love these tones and this is such a fun, nice, soft look. I know a lot of you also like the cooler tone purples. So this one is still definitely fun to have. The thing about these palettes is that they are very soft. If you don't like a soft eye, you probably don't need these palettes. These are very different than what is out on the market now. The type of palettes or makeup trends that are popular have to do with more pops, more vibrant colors, and it's all about pigmentation. You're not going to get that with these palettes. So if you're a person that likes the pigmentation, likes the vividness, you're not going to like these. These are made for people who really prefer a soft look. I would describe both of these palettes as very romantic. I would suggest Solstice, of course, if you like a little bit more warm, bronzy looks, and then if you like the more mauve cool tone looks. You have Midsummer. Even when I looked at these online, I didn't think that they looked too different from each other, but they are two complete different palettes on the eyelid, you guys. And I'm standing up for these palettes because they are just the type of palettes that look bleh in the pan, but they are so gorgeous, flattering, soft, romantic on the eye, and I really, really do like these. Now, of course, when I did look at them online, I was like, hmm, these kind of look like some palettes that they already have. I did do a little comparison section for you guys, so let's get into that. All right, you guys, so the first palette that I wanted to compare to the Midsummer is the Paris Edit. Now, the Paris Edit is one of my favorites of the large edit palettes, and you can see it's a very close color story. So if you're into these cool tone kind of color stories, you're really going to like this one, especially if you liked this one. This one obviously has more shade. It was hard to pair shade to shade because this one has more mattes than this one has. So like this one has a lot of cool tone neutral kind of mattes, whereas this one just doesn't have that many transition shades. There's a lot more shimmer. I did swatch to the closest shades I could find. So the bottom here is the Midsummer palette, and these are the closest I could find in the Paris edit. I would say it more so has a similar color story, but I really really couldn't find dupe for dupe with maybe two of the lightest shades and you can see nothing really is identical. I don't think you need both but know if you have both they're not going to dupe one over the other and they just have different things to offer if you ask me like the midsummer just has more transition shades of really for a more simple eye look whereas you're getting a little bit more of a full look more options with the Paris edit. I also did want to take a look into the rosé edit palette another one of the bigger ones. Honestly I wouldn't say these are comparable I didn't even swatch them side by side. There are maybe a couple shades that are similar but those are the shades that you're going to find in every palette you know like a light shimmery color a mid-tone transition color but for the most part, I don't really find these to be very comparable. So I definitely thought Solstice had some similarities to the Apricotine palette. Even just looking at them side by side, you can tell they are kind of 
very closely related. A brigantine definitely has more pops of oranges that just can't be found in the solstice palette. So down here is the solstice. Here are the comparable shades in the brigantine. Definitely these are closer than anything that I could find to the midsummer palette. You have a very similar deep dark brown and maybe some of the transition shades could translate similar. However, these ones are just more peachy orange. Not exactly the same, but definitely in the same family, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, you can take a look and see what you think if it would be worth getting, but the only dupe for dupe I would say is a dark brown, and I just use dark brown so much that that's okay with me. Just different tones, really. This one has a little bit more pinky mauviness to it. I also took a look compared to the Spritz. The Spritz has more pops in there as well. They have similar transition shades that would translate almost very close on the eyelid, but I don't think these are really that close. This one on the eye really pulls so much more neutral mauve that these palettes just can't replicate. And then also for comparison's sake, take a look at the Warm Edit. Again, maybe like these two shades up here, very kind of normal shades for any palette are going to be close, but this one, it's just more muted. That's all I have for comparisons of the Busy Art shades. So my final thoughts to finish up these videos. I mean, these are very good palettes. They are very very great quality. I do get asked a lot of times if these are the same formula as the regular 12 pan palettes. I don't think they are at first I did, but the longer amount of time that I've owned my Vizier palettes, those 12 pan full side palettes are very, very special, but they're very, very pricey. These aren't quite as good as that phenomenal formula that they have, but these are very, very good. And I hope that you can see in the tutorial how easy they were to blend. So these are still a fantastic representation of Vizier, any of these in the little mini palettes. These particular color stories, do I think you need to run out and grab them? I don't think so, but if these have a color story that you're interested in, I do recommend them. I think they are very pretty. They're probably not my favorite color stories that they have. Like, they just came out with the Petite Pro with Shoo Shoo, and you can see how fun that was. So I don't think these are the first ones that I grab for, but when I put them on the eye, I really, really like them. So I don't think you're going to be let down if you like these color stories. So that is all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.